Good evening, everyone. Please rise for the pledge. Good evening again, everyone, and welcome to our November action meeting. We are going to start off with the approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? Mrs. Judge, and is there a second? Mrs. Kahn, thank you very much. The minutes are the regular action meeting dated October 20th, 2015, and the executive sessions dated October 20th, 2015. Are there any comments or questions on the minutes? Seeing none, Mr. Devereaux. Mrs. Kahn. Yes to all. Dr. Dickinson. Yes to all. Mr. Goodwin. Yes. Mrs. Judge. Yes to all. Mr. Robbins. Yes. Mr. Roth. Yes to all. Mrs. Seidel. Yes. Mrs. Matlack. Yes. Do we have any correspondence this evening? Dr. Dickinson. Thank you. Uh, this past Saturday, I attended the New Jersey School Board Association Delegate Assembly. Uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Is this on YouTube? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful way to spend a Saturday morning uh, in uh, West Windsor, New Jersey. Uh, the meeting opened up with the executive director of New Jersey SBA justifying why we pay our dues and what value they bring to the table. And some of the things that they highlighted was uh, their role as an advocate. And uh, some of the things that they're advocating for right now is a special ed levy cap adjustment, unfunded and underfunded state mandates, pension fund reform, funds for technology, and federal advocacy. Uh, he talked a little bit about ac the accountability regulations sunsetting in 2016, and they're going to be addressing that. Talked about the some of the ethics commission opinions that he quote unquote said that dozens of the decisions have been levied against board members and have handcuffed them. Many districts are actually operating under the doctrine of necessity just to operate, and they're trying to address this. Um, they demonstrated a new online governance training platform, which they were very proud of. So for those of us taking governance training, it'll be, they have a new online version of it, which is supposedly much more interactive and entertaining. So don't know if I agree with that, but <laughs> they're very proud of it. Uh, there are new training programs and certification programs that they're gonna be rolling out, uh, one of which is a master board member certification. There is a new New Jersey SBA website that's going to be rolled out into production by the end of February. There were five resolutions that were submitted during the last six-month period. Three of them were re removed by the resolution subcommittee because they were already covered with current policy. Uh, one was passed along to the finance subcommittee for review, and we actually voted on one resolution. Uh, this resolution was brought up by Highland Park in Middlesex County. And uh, I'll just read the, the wording of the original resolution by the school board was, the NJSBA believes that the governor and the legislature should not use the budget process to hold charter schools and non-public schools harmless from state budget cuts or reallocations of state funds at the expense of public school districts. And that went through the resolution subcommittee and they reworded it and the wording that we voted on was the, NJ, the NJSBA believes that any changes to charter school funding made by the state should be fully funded by the state directly to the charter. And the reason that this came up was that um, the, the, the language of the way that the, it went into the budget from the state last year uh, made the, the 
school districts accountable for uh, the the funding for out of district placements into charter schools and uh, everybody that stood up was in support of it there was no dissent and then we voted on it and it passed with a 99 percent pass rate so, any questions we got out early actually i was back home by 11 o'clock wow. yeah so very efficient efficient day <laughs> So hope, hope hope I worded that correctly. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you, Barry, for the report and for spending your Saturday morning up there. Uh, we don't have any presentations this evening, so we'll move into our board representative reports. First up, we'll call on East, unless you've already decided differently. Okay, so then we're going to have West first, and that tonight we'll, we have Justin with us. Good evening, Dr. Malosh, Ms. Matlack, Mr. Roth, and board members. The month of November has been filled with many exciting news and activities. The West Boys and Girls Swim Team started their first practice of the season last Monday. They are practicing hard for their upcoming meets in December and are hoping to go to states this season. The West Basketball Team as well is eager to get underway with their upcoming season. And the latest issue of the, um, the Lions Roar came out on Wednesday, which you all have in front of you. Um, in this edition, there's Spirit Week information, a story about an author's visit to West, an exclusive interview with ABC News chief anchor George Stephanopoulos, and much more. Theater Workshop has been practicing for their upcoming play, The Outsiders, based on S.E. Hinton's novel under the direction of Miss Carolyn Messias. The shows will take place on December 10th and 11th at 7 p.m. and December 12th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Some seniors who applied early decision to their first college have started to receive acceptance letters, including my board partner, Tim Intelisano, who received the great news that he was accepted to Penn State. It could be a very happy or depressing time for seniors. <laughs> Spirit Week is currently happening in our building. We started last Thursday with theme day where students dressed up as some, someone or something in their category. The themes for each grade, each grade are as follows. Freshmen's sports, sophomores horror, juniors action, and seniors musicals. Friday was favorite sports team day, where students and staff dressed up in their favorite sports jersey or, sp or shirts for Spirit Week points. In addition, students ended the week with the homecoming dance in the cafeteria. A DJ was on hand with all the latest dancing music for students to enjoy and a photo booth for students to get pictures with friends. At the end of the dance, the homecoming court was selected. Monday was dress up day, where students dressed in their best to receive more points for their grade level. Today was class apparel day. Students had to dress up in their grade level apparel color. As I speak, the lip sync competition is going on. Students in each grade level are lip syncing their hearts out to win the annual competition for Spirit Week points. Everyone worked hard on their song selections. And finally, tomorrow to end Spirit Week, students will dress up in West apparel to show their school spirit off for the big pep rally before the early dismissal. There, the band will be playing, male cheerleading will be going on, and much more. At night is the huge annual East vs. West football game, where both high schools will be competing to win the boot. East has had it for a couple years, but West is hoping to take it over this year. West wishes East the best of luck. Dr. Malash, we hope to see you there. In conclusion, as always, I must end with a statement on the settlement of the teacher's contract. Now, I know you, all, you are all working extremely hard every night and even into Thanksgiving to get a resolution to the contract. The students are hoping that you are close to settling with our teachers so we can get back to normal. Cherry Hill West would like to wish everyone a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Jane, do you have the East report for us? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So last week we had our homecoming da dance, about 380 people attended, and in the recent years, homecoming dance hasn't been a big part of East tradition, but this year we have <coughs> successfully made it a tradition, and hopefully in the next year they will follow what the work that we've done. Uh, as I speak right now, the Spirit Week dance is going on, and for those of you who don't know, uh, the, Spirit the Spirit Week dance is when each grade coordinates a dance that involves anyone who wants to be a part of it, and they compete for points, and it's a really big part of uh, the Spirit Week experience. We also had a blood drive uh, 
a couple weeks ago and we at east we have two blood drives per year and this one was really successful we saved 810 lives and that's obviously a big achievement for us as a community the theater department is currently rehearsing for the tempest right now it's a very fun shakespearean play and uh it is opening on december 4th and playing on december 4th 5th 11th and 12th at 7 30 at east obviously and tomorrow we are going to be having the pep rally at school so uh after school after classes and early the homecoming representatives who um, everyone has voted for are going to be there and we're going to be celebrating our sp spirit and then at 6 p.m as Justin mentioned, we're going to be having the homecoming football game at West. And also, uh, students are obviously still concerned about the contract and would like to have more additional updates. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. And uh, we appreciate hearing about what's going on. And I'm, I know that I plan to attend the game tomorrow night. And I'm sure many of the other board members do as well. So. Um, Good luck to both of you. <laughs> and um, you both brought up negotiations, and we do. the board does have a statement, and um, maybe it will answer some of your questions. The board has received the fact finder's report with recommendations for settlement of the negotiations between the board and CHEA. As required by law, the report will become a public document later this week, and we will post it on our website at that time. As CHEA has done, we accept the fact-finding recommendations in principle. We are waiting to hear back from CHEA on a procedural issue. Further details on this procedural matter will be disclosed upon the public release of the fact-finding report. We look forward to bringing this process to a close. And now we have our first public discussion. And at this time, you may come to the microphone and approach the board and speak to anything that's on the agenda. You will have three minutes for your remarks. When you come to the microphone, please state your name and your address. Seeing none, oh, I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Helen Ferrante. I live at 517 Mackin Drive, Cherry Hill. Tonight, I will speak about the teacher's contract. I'm no. sorry, that's not on the agenda, so you will have to wait till the second public comment oh, to address okay. the board on that issue. Not a problem. Thank you. Anyone else before we move on? Okay, we'll move into our action agenda at this time. And I would like to ask Mrs. Seidel to move the CNI agenda, please. Thank you, Mrs. Malak. The superintendent recommends, and I move the following. Number one, attendance at conferences and workshops for the 2015-2016 school year. Number two, approval of out-of-district student placements for 2015-2016 school year. Number three, approval of Mount Misery mileage. Number four, approval of non-public textbook for the 2015-2016 school year. Number five, approval of non-public technology for 2015-2016 school year. Number six, resolution approving agreements with Camden County Educational Services Commission for 2015-2016 school year. Number seven, approval of agreements for 2015-2016 school year under $17,500. And for number eight, you have a yellow sheet, which is um, has some additional items of number eight. And that is approval of non-public schools security aid 2015-2016 school year. Do I have a second? Mr. Goodwin, any discussion? Mrs. Malak. Um, I, I'd just like to ask Dr. Mahan to just give a brief explanation, as she did to the CNI committee, on number eight, the approval of the non public school security aid. So, we received funding from the state specifically designated for non public schools um, security aid for them to, 
um, if they want to add security vegetables, um, create ID badges for staff, et cetera. So there was a um, specific list of allowable uses. Um, the state gave us some pretty strict guidelines or deadlines in terms of having it board approved and then um, us having to report back to the county office how each of the non-publics were going to be spending their money. So on the yellow sheet, what you have is each of the non-public schools and then the item that they um, have decided to purchase with their funds. Some of them you will notice where it says, for example, under resurrection, speakers, horns, and then it says reimbursement. If the non-public school made a purchase between July 1, 2015, up until the date when the state held their meeting, telling them that this money was going to be dispersed, then they could be reimbursed for items that they had already purchased that qualified as an allowable use for, non for security aid. So um, some of them, the reason for the handout, some of them needed a little bit of extra time in terms of getting quotes back from vendors. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, Mr. Devereaux. This is Seidel. Yes, to all. This is Khan. Yes. Dr. Dickinson. Yes. Mr. Goodwin. Yes. Mrs. Judge. I am uh, going to abstain from number seven. Yes to the rest. Mr. Robbins. Yes. Mr. Roth. Yes to all. Mrs. Matlock. Yes. Um, before we move on in the action agenda, I neglected to give Dr. Malash time for his superintendent comments, and he even brought props tonight. So before we move on, I'm going to take a little break in the action agenda to allow him to use his props and give his comments. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Matlack. And I, you know, it's hard because I very rarely have anything to say. <laughs> so I have a couple of items that I, that I do want to share. First, I have up here on the table, this is the award that we received uh, at the school board's convention from Sustainable Jersey for Schools. Um, and this is an achievement award because all 19 of our schools uh, received awards this year from Sustainable Jersey. Um, we had 18 of our schools that received bronze level awards and then Bret Hart that received a silver level award. We were one of five districts in the state that had all of our schools recognized. Um, so tremendous achievement um, from the students, from the staff, from all the folks, community members who were involved in doing that work. Uh, it was great to be down uh, at the convention and to watch everybody get up and, and to receive the awards, a, a tremendous testament. Along with that, uh, I just received in the mail um, this um, recognition from uh, our legislators, from Senator Beach, uh, Assemblyman Greenwald, and Assemblywoman Lampett, uh, and it's a joint legisl legislative resolution that's celebrating the momentous occasion. Um, so the, the, the actual trophy or the, the wooden cutout uh, will be here in the lobby, and we'll get the certificate frame to put out. Um, but it's tremendous. I think there were 59 schools that were recognized that evening, and when you look at the 59 across the state that were recognized, 19 of them were from Cherry Hill. Uh, so tremendous accomplishment, and again, a testament to the work of the folks in the community. Um, so I did want to share those props with you. Just a, a real few other brief comments. Uh, thank you to, to Jane and to Justin for presenting about the activities going on at the high schools. Um, it's very exciting times in our schools. We're actually more than 25% done with the academic year already, uh, which is crazy to me. It seems like we just started. Um, Tuesday of next week is December the 1st. Um, Thanksgiving, you know, is, is two days from now. Uh, so a lot has been going on in the schools. It's been really exciting to be out in schools, uh, seeing the students, seeing the staff. Uh, we were excited last week to recognize American Education Week uh, and to truly recognize all of the folks that work within the educational community, um, from the buildings and grounds staff to the secretaries, the educational assistants, the teachers, the child study team members, the counselors, uh, the administrators, uh, all of these people that come together on a daily basis and, and really take care of the needs of the more than 11,000 students that are, that are on our campuses every day. Um, 
I was able to go last week uh, and, and welcome um, with Mr. Robbins um, and some other folks, the German Exchange Group um, that is here from, um, and I'm, I will mispronounce it, Gymnasium Puchheim uh, in Germany. So there are a number of students and two staff members uh, from that school who are here uh, staying with members of the East community and with the teaching staff. They'll be here for two weeks. Um, this weekend they'll be experiencing a homecoming game tomorrow night uh, as well as Thanksgiving. They're doing travel. Uh, and then in the spring, uh, around spring break, we have two staff members, teachers from High School East, uh, and a number of uh, students who are traveling, traveling to Germany uh, for an exchange experience as well. Um, so that was absolutely tremendous. Fall sports are just about done. Tomorrow night truly is the end of fall sports uh, in the district between the middle school programs that went on, all the high school programs. It is highlighted by the homecoming game, um, which will be at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. And Justin, I will absolutely be there. I wouldn't miss it. Um, I'm thrilled to see the teams compete and even more so to see all so many members of the community come out um, to support the schools and support what goes on. Lots of highlights throughout the fall season. Uh, one of the big ones is the success of the East cross country team, uh, you know, led by Aaron Groff uh, and his performance um, with what went on. I'm very excited to see The Tempest. It's one of my favorite shows, uh, as well as The Outsiders, one of my favorite books. Um, so that comes up very quickly after uh, we return in December, not to mention the winter concerts. Um, so busy times, but exciting times. And thank you for letting me use my props. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and next month I will try to remember your comments at the appropriate time. <laughs> Okay, now we will move on with our action agenda, and Dr. Dickinson will move the BNF agenda, please. Thank you, Mr. Mat Mat Mrs. Matlack. The superintendent recommends, and I move the following. One, financial reports. Two, resolutions. Three, resolution for the award of bids. Four, resolution for the award of transportation. Five, resolution to accept audit report and six acceptance of donations do i have yeah what uh, that was supposed to come off well no they're yeah. coming in december i know we're not accepting it no 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 okay i remove item five then yeah i don't see it it's removed on i think we removed it okay. yeah oh okay you know, uh, item five is acceptance of donations. Okay. And uh, so I'll do that again. Okay. Number one, financial reports. Number two, resolutions. Number three, resolution for the award of bids. Number four, resolution for the award of transportation. And number five, acceptance of donations. Do I have a second? Mr. Goodwin. Any questions? No, seeing none, Mr. Devereaux. Dr. Dickinson? Yes, to all. Mr. Goodwin? Yes. Mrs. Judge? Um, abstain is to the Cooper Health System on the bill, uh, bill list, and yes to the rest. Mr. Robbins? Abstaining with respect to New Jersey American on the bill list, yes to the remainder. Mr. Roth? Yes to all. Mrs. Seidel? Abstaining with respect to CDW on the bill list, yes to the rest. Mrs. Kahn? Yes. Mrs. Matlack? Yes. Next up we have the HR agenda. Mrs. Judge, please. Thank you. Um, the superintendent recommends and I move the following. Number one, termination of employment certificated. Number two, termination of employment non-certificated. Number three, appointment certificated. Number four, appointments non-certificated. Number five, leaves of absence certificated. Number six, leaves of absence non-certificated. Number seven, assignment salary change um, non-certificated. Number eight, other compensation certificated. Number nine, approval of revised job descriptions. And we have a handout with a number 10, assignment salary change certificated. Do I have a second? Mrs. Seidel, and are there any questions? Yeah, you're right. So we're batting a thousand here. So there is not a number ten. There is not a number ten at the. Un it says number nine. It ends on number nine. It should be ten. 
It should be 10. It should be 10. Any questions? <laughs> I was told there'd be no math. What is up? <laughs> So seeing no questions, is, am I right, uh, Mr. Devereaux? Mrs. Judge? Yes to all. Mr. Robbins? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes to all. Mrs. Seidel? Yes to all. Mrs. Kahn? Yes to all. Dr. Dickinson? Yes to all. Mr. Goodwin? Yes. Mrs. Matlack? Yes. Um, now I'll ha ask Mr. Goodwin to move the P&L agenda, please. Right, thank you, Mrs. Matlack. Um, I have one item. The superintendent recommends, and I move the following, approval of harassment, intimidation, bullying, investigation decisions. Do I have a second? Mrs. Seidel, are there any questions? Not Mr. Devereaux. Mr. Goodwin? Yes. Mrs. Judge? Yes. Mr. Robbins? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mrs. Seidel? Yes. Mrs. Kahn? Yes. Dr. Dickinson? Yes. Mrs. Matlack? Yes. Mrs. Judge, is, you have a is it clarification? Is to fix a typo in HR? Is it too late to, to a minor typo? Can I so have like a to motion to correct the record on page 32? Um, it's just a typo of it should be the year 2015. 11-25-2015 to 6-30-2016 under homebound instructor. Page 32 of the HR agenda. I apologize. Yeah, number N, homebound instructor. It should be 11 25 of 2015. It says 2016. Well, it would Very have been a better catch. catch if I had done it on time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next up is strategic planning. Mr. Roth, do you have anything for us this evening? No, I don't. Okay. Then uh, we will move on to our second public discussion. At this time, you may come to the microphone and speak to any issue. When you come to the microphone, please state your name and your address, and you will have three minutes for your remarks. Uh, please note that the light will turn yellow when you have 30 seconds left and read when your time is up. Round two. <laughs> uh, my name, Helen Ferrante, 517 Mac and Drive. Um, tonight, I will speak about the teacher's contract. I spoke at the September meeting about starting to give these more than deserving teachers a contract. If I understand correctly, the state appointed fact finder provided the information in an objective way that is in the best interest for both sides. What is the issue? When you negotiate, it is give and take in good faith. Then it goes to fact finding, simple. The board seems to me that they do not want to settle this contract. It is plain and simply not fair and disrespectful to our dedicated teachers here. This is an elected board, which means your purpose is to represent the community and the taxpayers. I can clearly see that that is not happening. Now I will start to explain to you what could potentially happen in the schools if this contract is not settled soon. The teachers will feel neglected, which could lead to the school morale to plummet. This in turn will be reflected upon on the students. Our children will start to suffer the effects of poorly made decisions from this Board of Education. Teachers will retire and move on to different districts that will appreciate their true worth. I do not want to see our top rated teachers and schools begin to decline. 
I will end with it's time to settle this contract for our well-deserved teachers and show them the same respect you would want from your current job positions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Ferrante. As I stated at the beginning of the meeting, as CHEA has done, the board accepts the fact-finding recommendations in principle. And there's an outstanding issue that we're a procedural issue that we're waiting to hear back on. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to make a comment to the board? Oh, it's not on. Okay, it's not on. Sorry, I'm used to speaking without a mic um, in front of a large room. So my name is Jill Roth Gutman. I reside in Cherry Hill. Um, and I spoke at the last board meeting. Uh, that was my first meeting that I attended. Um, after the meeting, I was asked to give my email address to someone and that I uh, there would be some follow-up. But the only person that actually followed up with me was somebody that does not work for the district, but is contracted out, and that is... Uh, Richard Real from Aramark. Um, so I'd like to reiterate some points that I made last time. The first is that I would also like to see a contract signed. I don't think that it's very positive for our teachers. It's not positive for our students to not have a contract um, that is uh, really in place that's benefiting all parties. Um, and really, it's an issue because we don't want to see the better teachers leaving this district and going elsewhere because they have that option um, and they could easily do that. Um, but many of them choose not to because of things like tenure in place. But it, for those who are newer to the district that don't have tenure, there's a very good possibility that they could leave here and go to other districts that are very good in this area too. Um, second, I wanted to know what was being done to look into implementing a full-day kindergarten program into this district. This is implemented in many other competitive districts in the state, um, and it really needs to be something that is brought to light and really looked into seriously in Cherry Hill. Um, the next is when I looked at the um, online for a list of the upcoming school board meetings. I didn't see a list of all the dates posted and I wanted to know if that could be uh, looked into and posted online so that way people can plan to attend these meetings because 11 people in a district this large is pretty sad showing. Um, I also wanted to know um, and thank actually uh, if there could be an expansion of the farm logics program um, that Aramark is taking part in. And I wanted to thank Mr. Uh, Richard Real for actually uh, emailing back and forth with me. It sounds like he's waiting for the EDCC director to get back to him, particularly about the kindergartners, because they're not offered the same school lunch program that the rest of the school is being offered. Um, there's a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables that are missing from the EDCC menu that the rest of the uh, school, the grades one through five, are getting right now. Um, and I'd like our ki all the kids to be able to get the same menu. And lastly, I wanted to know if the budget for next year could be looked into into providing supplies like tissues and paper towels, just really basic things to the classrooms because as parents, we shouldn't have to be bringing in that basic of supplies. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Wilson, can you please address the um, dates of the school board meetings on the website and where that can be found? Yes, um, all of our board meeting dates are on the website. If you go on the home page, um, there's a section under the tab, Our District, and it says district calendars. When you go on there, there's um, a district events calendar each month. We have the the work session, the action meeting, and all of our um, committee meetings listed month by month. Um, also, if you subscribe to the district newsletter, those dates are on, upcoming dates are always listed in the newsletter. There's also a tab on the homepage of the website that says upcoming events. All of the um, most recent board meetings that'll be coming up within the next few weeks are also listed there. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to come to the microphone? Yeah, my name is uh, James Kennedy. I'm calling in regards to uh, transportation for my daughters. Uh, it's been going on for quite some time now, going back and forth uh, with uh, Don Bart and Pat from his office. 
and uh, it keeps on being told that either it has to be spoken to with the superintendent or the lawyer. So I figure I come up here today. Uh, I have a contract and a, a request for reimbursement. Uh, I had a contract last time, and it said 45 days that uh, it would be honored, and it wasn't. It took 75 days. Uh, my family hit hard times, and the way this process is being handled is it's taking a bigger toll, and in a long, it's costing the township more money than it should. Um, it's something that should cost, you know, maybe around 150 to 200 dollars a month. It's costing 600, just because it's not being honored in a timely fashion. Um, so I'm here, so maybe I could talk to the superintendent, which I know I emailed before. Uh, the lawyer's here at the same time. Everybody's in the same room. So I'm hoping this can get resolved quick. You know, maybe a few minutes after the meeting, if you have. I know you guys are busy, but uh, if something can be done, because it is taking way too long. Uh, my daughters are uh, suffering edu with their education. Uh, they miss days. You know, uh, my my 13 year old, she was uh, she's enrolled in a program with John Hopkins University. She was at 10. She was at a 10th grade level. I know she fell behind, and in most of it's because of transportation. You know, we had hard times. Like I said, we didn't have a car to get them back and forth. We're taking them by bus, and that's six hours a day, up to six hours a day. And all I keep on getting is a runaround. I was told that uh, Don Bart was going to speak to the lawyer today, and I figured it was going to be tonight at this meeting. So I'm here. Hopefully I can speak to everybody that it needs to be uh, involved. You know, instead of no more emails or phone calls, it's it's too much. It's a lot. Stress-wise, it's crazy. It shouldn't have been this long. So, thank you. Okay. Um, stick around after the meeting, please, and um, s please see Mr. Bart, and he will speak with you about it. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to address the board? Seeing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Mrs. Seidel? and Mrs. Judge. Thank you for coming, everyone.